Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Romoliotis, aka PD Beats. Pity Beats here from Pop Turner, speaking to Jack Wolf about the magic flute. Welcome to the show, man. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. And it's a it's a big month. It's a Jack Wolf month. I mean, the magic <laughs> flute, I mean, season two of Shadow and Bone. I mean, there's a lot happening right now. Uh, well, it's, I'm very grateful. It's been a bit wild, but very exciting. <laughs> it's kind of like, does it feel like you're on a roller coaster that you can't get off, basically? Oh, absolutely. absolutely. I mean, everything feels like that to me, to be honest. But yeah, this has been like a very sort of special, fun type of roller coaster. Luckily, uh, both casts of these shows are really close and really friendly. So it sort of also feels like I get to go on two really fun school trips. So it, it hasn't been too scary. It's been, that's it's been pretty fun. awesome. That's a cool thing. Like a field, get field yeah. trip. Absolutely. Yeah, that's, that's how I'm thinking of it to keep myself from spiraling. It's been, it's been good. It's been fun. 100%. Magic Flute, really exciting project. project. I mean, so many peop- amazing people attached. I mean, iconic, right? Mozart, you know, mm-hmm. one of the best operas ever made. People can make the Absolutely, argument. Yeah. Um, what is that mindset working on a project that's like an adapted project to like popular source material? Like, do you try not to think about it much? Like, are you doing a lot of research? Like, I'm curious about that. Yeah, I, that's a really great, great question. And I think what I've been learning from working on these is that every actor has their own process with that, yeah. whether or not they engage with the source material and how much they do if they do so. Um, I, I can't help but engage completely. I think both with Shadow and Bone and um, the Magic Flute, we're lucky that the source material is so strong. Like, why wouldn't why wouldn't you? You know, yeah. I'm very lucky to be playing two characters. Um, actually, to say that the Magic Flute is very very different because our adaptation it's not a direct adaptation. It's almost like a tribute, like a homage to. And it's to like a reimagine. Got- it's a reimagination almost too. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So I didn't have the pressure of feeling like I had to play Tamino, this famous opera hero. Um, I got to just play a teenage boy discovering opera for himself. And that's that was a lot of fun. A lot of elements at play with this movie. Um, you know, mm. there's the music, there's the fantasy, there's the adventure. Which kind of element were you excited for the most? Or was it a kind of combination of a bunch of them? I think it's the latter, which is yeah. the most boring answer, I'm afraid. It was like all of it. Because <laughs> Everything. It was also, all of the things. <laughs> all of it. All the things. It was my first. Uh, it was my first ever sort of feature film project too. So it was my first time on a set of that scale. It was my first time working in film studios. It was my first time. All of these things. So um, it it was constantly new experiences and uh, you know all, all of the things that go with that. So. Super, super exciting. I think we were spoiled with the Magic Flute because there are just such expansive, brilliant worlds to explore. Yeah. Um, what was really one, and we started with that, actually, we started shooting with a lot of the in-opera world stuff. Okay. Um, so by the time we got to Salzburg to shoot the more of the real worlds, the uh, combinations of like Tim and Sophie and the school and the, and the Alps and stuff, that was so beautiful because we were on set practical sets that had, you know, so much detail involved so I actually you know shooting in Salzburg was very very special for me also just Mozart you can just feel the presence all around that city so the influence of a lot of classical music like Mozart is one of those where the influence is always there even if you don't yeah. think about it like some of my favorite yeah. bands of like the punk rock and everything like they talk about Mozart as influences. <laughs> like it's pretty crazy right you come from a theater musical background right yeah, I do. I so do, yeah. is that something too that you like, you're surprised to like find out because you know, like about a lot of classical music and a lot of the things that you've done in the past is a lot of classic music. But when you meet like other musicians and other people, like, are you surprised to kind of see the influence of classical music? Like, I'm curious about that. Oh, I mean, I guess I, I don't think I am because it's all that it's all ingrained isn't it into the material of the stuff that we do and i think that's what's important about adapting stories is that we we always we're always telling the same stories aren't we in different guises with different characters yeah. it's all for all of time and it's just how can you adapt a story to suit what we want now to yeah. suit an audience now and um you know and how do you improve on a story how do you make it better how do you make it kinder and less cruel how do you like 
how do you centre more voices? How do you, you know, all of these things that I think it's our duty to do when we're adapting stories, right? So you can feel Mozart in, in the fabric of, of Western music now, totally, but also we expand upon that. And I think what's lovely about the Magic Flute is that you literally get to follow someone's journey into discovering what opera can be for him. A hundred percent. And how it can help him out of something he needs. So yeah, it's really helpful. That's so well said. I established in the beginning of this interview that is an in, it is indeed Jack Wolf month, and <laughs> Jack Wolf month has a little bit of a theme, right? There's a fantasy theme here, which I like as well, right? <laughs> there's a you know, yeah. There's jumping into different fantasy worlds, totally. I mean, what is the mindset kind of with Shadow and Bone? Quickly, kind of. I mean, yeah. such a amazing first season. These characters are so fleshed out. So much kind of happens at the end of season one and now season two and you're joining as a new character what is that mindset is it a lot of emotions basically joining the cast of shadow and bone <laughs> oh ab absolutely like couldn't quite believe that any of it was happening to be honest <laughs> it was yeah completely magic i mean i loved the first season so much and i think the work was so strong and i what what sort of stuns me every day now we just had our premiere for season two last night as well and what sort of stuns me is that it just feels like a little family. And then we always, I, I almost forget that I met these people through shooting this show with them. So when I see them work, now watching season two, I'm watching my friends sort of do something so good. So I'm just constantly proud now of it. Yeah. So yeah, I can't wait for people to see it. And you know, the Netflix factor is, is crazy because it kind of drops. And yeah. one of my favorite things is the... <laughs> the global aspect of it is so many people watch it across so many time zones. So yes, wherever you are true. at the time, you're going to wake up in the morning and there's going to be tons of people that have like already <laughs> watched the whole thing. Right. That's so true. I hadn't thought about it. You're that. like, I haven't yeah. even had my breakfast and people want like a season three already. Like, come on. Yes. <laughs> hey, well me too. So I'll join that club. <laughs> it's so interesting. Um, did you know what you were getting yourself into with the audition for Shadow and Bone? Because I feel like audition kind of stories vary. Sometimes you know a lot about what you're kind of going in for, and sometimes you have no idea. What was the audition process like for Shadow and Bone? For me, it was fast. It was fast and furious. Uh, I was. It was really kind. So I was. It was cast by um, Sophie Holland and Faith Enby, who are just they're, they're magic, and they provided so much detail into what they wanted to Wilder, what this this character description was. And I read. I remember reading the description of this character, and uh, it, it contains some parts of the book. And there's a description about Wylan in the books that Lee Bardugo wrote, which is um, he seems like a silk-eared puppy in a room full of fighting dogs. And I was like, that's such a great description of someone. And I took that into the the tapes I shot, and then two days after that, had a chemistry read with Kit, who plays Jesper. And um, so it was wild. It was so fast. Um, and then I just tried to sort of get my way through the books as fast as possible before we started cheating. Both ensemble casts, Magic Flute, Shadow and Bone. You got to work with amazing people on Magic Flute. Bigger cast for Shadow and Bone. Is the mindset change a little bit with the size of cast or is it all storytelling for you? Oh, yeah. I think it for me, it always comes down to ensemble. I think yeah. that's very important for me, yeah. to me. And collaboration, community, that's the reason I enjoy doing this yeah. and it's where I started you know I started doing it um in a youth theatre in the city I grew up in, in in the north of England every Saturday coming together with the community to like make work to, to learn how to act whatever to learn how to use your voice and I think that's where it started for me theatre is all about that too it's all about ensemble it's all about sort of sharing something and then also in a bigger in a bigger way on screen you're sharing something with the audience it's about the reader it's about the the audience too so yeah yeah, it's always people first. Um, the the differences, I guess, with with the magic flute, I'm I'm on screen a lot more, for, which for me to watch is a very different experience. <laughs> um, with Wyland, and I think um, I'm very much one of one of six characters, and then within that, one of a bigger group of characters. So, um, you know, I, I'm watching it less through my fingers like this, but um, which yeah, really really proud to be part of two very strong ensembles it's great oh absolutely i mean yeah the, uh, 
hashtag Jack Wolf month. I mean, the magic <laughs> flute in theaters nationwide starting today, I believe. And uh, season two, Shadow and Bone, March 16th, I believe, on Netflix. That's right. Yeah. Holy smokes, pretty soon. Jack, thank you so much for your time. It was really great chatting with you. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Thank you so nice much. Nice to meet you. Instagram is where they can keep up to date too, right? Is it just your name, Jack Wolf? It is. It's uh, at Jack T. Wolf, I think. Amazing. Well, this has been Pop Turn. If you do.com slash Pop Turn for previous episodes, catch Jack Wolf in the Magic Flute in theaters nationwide starting today and in season two of Shadow and Bone, dropping worldwide on Netflix March 16th. Until next time, it's Jack and PD Beats signing off. Thank you for tuning in to Pop Turnative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Pop Turnative on YouTube. Be sure to like Pop Turnative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.